from their huge holes. As much oil as every well in Texas produces in three and a half days. But all of this oil needs to be refined. Because the thing about crude is it's crude. Far too crude to be of any use as fuel for your car. So at the heart of the refinery lies the laboratory, headed by Joyce Bussey. It's up to Joyce's lab to supervise the process of turning the crude oil into usable products. Crude oil in this state is not very useful at all. If you put this in your tank, you'd be sorry, because it wouldn't go anywhere. The trouble with crude oil is it contains a mix of hydrocarbons, each of which has a different number of carbon atoms. These hydrocarbons are different in weight. The lightest is propane, while the heaviest is used to make asphalt. Extracting gasoline from this mix is a formidable challenge, and it requires one heck of a chemistry set to do it. The most important part of the plant is this. Like a moonshine still as tall as a cathedral, this is where the crude is separated. Heated to over 370 degrees Celsius, it's pumped into the base of the tower, and like steam from a kettle, the vapour rises. As it cools, the molecules condense. The heaviest asphalt's first at the bottom. Lighter molecules, including gasoline and jet fuel, continue rising until they too condense and can be siphoned off. But the trouble with producing all this gasoline is they now have an ocean of potentially explosive liquid to deal with. But of course it's this explosive quality that makes gasoline so useful. So to make sure it's as explosive as it should be, it's up to workers like Derek Smalley to carefully take samples for analysis in the lab. In all, every 191 litre barrel of crude produces 88 litres of gasoline, 48 litres of diesel, around 26 litres of jet fuel and heavy fuel oil, almost 7 litres of propane and another 32 litres of other products such as lubricants and plastics. Every day, this plant produces enough petrol to fuel a car on 770 round trips to the moon. So, after a pleasant cycle around the facility, for which no petrol was required, Derek arrives at the lab to deliver his samples to Joyce Bussey for testing. Our lab does the final product check of all product that goes out of the, the refinery. And if it doesn't meet our customer's expectation, it doesn't go out the gate. The fuel is tested by feeding it to a gasoline connoisseur an aging but robust knock testing engine. Engine knocking happens when fuel spontaneously ignites as it's being compressed in the engine cylinder. The reason for this premature ignition is there's too much heptane and not enough octane in the mix. By increasing the percentage of octane, the mix can be improved until the knocking stops. The lab can then feed their data back to the main refinery to correct any mixing errors and ensure a perfect blend. With the refinery's work done, some of her half a million valves are opened and the gasoline flows through underground pipelines which feed it to various local terminals, like this one in South Houston. From here, it's transferred to huge tankers for transport by road by drivers like Bradley Unruh. But filling up a tanker is way more dangerous than simply filling up your car. It can be dangerous, but just being a good, cautious, alert driver really, really, really helps. The hundreds of litres of volatile cargo mean it's essential Bradley follows stringent safety procedures. 
a mistake whilst loading or unloading the tank could result in a serious explosion. So he takes no chances. The metal bodywork can generate sparks from static electricity. So first a cord is attached to ground the trailer and also activate the overfill protection probes at the top of each compartment. To cope with the threat of highly flammable vapours escaping, a second pipe, known as the vapour recovery pipe, siphons off any leaks, which might otherwise escape into the atmosphere. Only once these pipes are in place can Bradley connect the fuel lines and begin to pump. Every day, over a million gallons of petrol are safely transported to local garages from this terminal alone. Pumped into the service station's huge reservoir, the petrol is finally ready for use. So the next time you fill up your car and grimace at the cost of your fuel, you can at least try and find some solace contemplating the extraordinary amount of work it's taken to ensure your wheels keep on turning.